Hello and welcome to this video on multinational companies. So in this video we're going to look at uh, two things. We're going to look at why become a multinational company and then secondly look at from a country's perspective whether multinational companies are good news or bad news. So let's start off with what we mean by a multinational company. A multinational company, sometimes known as transnational companies, is a business that operates substantial facilities, produces and sells in more than one country. So this is the, the key part of our definition really is the first bit here, that uh, any country that operates in more than one country, produces and sells in more than one country, and does not consider any particular country its national home, we would say is a multinational company. These are some examples here on the right hand side. The headquarters are normally located uh, in one particular country, but it will have significant operations elsewhere around the world. So here are some examples of multinational companies. We can see uh, companies like BMW, Samsung, Microsoft, Pepsi, McDonald's, Gillette, Coca-Cola. These are examples of multinational companies. So what's the good news? What's the advantages? Why would we want to expand our operations so that we become a multinational company? Well, often we do this so we can access cheaper labour in other markets to reduce our costs as part of a cost minimisation strategy. We may look to access new markets through a multinational company approach, so actually base ourselves there rather than just sell there so we can access a wider customer base. We can maybe seek to reduce the tax that we pay through a process called transfer pricing, which we'll look at in a second. So there may be some financial benefits here. We may be able to maximise revenue or maximise profits or generate better returns for our shareholders. We can achieve global economies or achieve global economies of scale because we're operating on a much larger scale. We may be able to control key supplies. This might be particularly important for multi uh, companies that are involved in natural resources like Shell. All of this may enable us to fund investment in innovation uh, and research and development. This also allows us to pursue a policy of diversification, perhaps if we offer, uh, own different businesses or sell different products in different markets around the world. So I mentioned briefly there the concept of transfer pricing. Let's have a look at this in a little bit more detail and how this uh, works. This is um, the uh, layout of Amazon and its subsidiary companies. So up here we have Amazon, uh, the American company. And then we'll see as we go further down that this owns several other companies, which in turn uh, own a company here, for example, in Gibraltar. And there's another company here, for example, in Luxembourg. At the bottom of the table down here, we have all the local area businesses. So here's the one in Germany, uh, here's the one in the UK, here's the one in France. And what these, what will happen here is the company in Luxembourg, the Amazon subsidiary in Luxembourg, will charge uh, these companies here, for example in the UK and Germany or France, a fee uh, to use the Amazon brand name. So let's say they make a charge here of 20 million pounds to the UK company. That means the UK company will send 20 million pounds out of the UK Amazon branch and into the Luxembourg branch. Now the effect of this is this will reduce the profits being recorded in the UK business. So effectively in the UK they may be paying a very low rate of tax. You know sometimes they're not even paying any tax because of this extra cost that's coming from the Luxembourg company that's reducing the UK business's profits to zero. That means instead that the profit here is being recorded in the Luxembourg branch, but the Luxembourg company may pay very low rates of corporation tax, maybe only like 12% on its profits. So effectively Amazon here from its activities in the UK is paying only 12% corporation tax whereas the UK rate of the corporation tax may be 20% or even higher. Once the profits have been taxed at 12%, they can then flow back through the company structure to the original company in the US. 
So transfer pricing is where subsidiaries within a company charge each other um, fees for using brand names and so on and services and so on like that to move profits to a jurisdiction where tax rates are low to minimize the tax rate that uh, the company pays and this is all perfectly legal but it's definitely one of the advantages of being a multinational company what might be the benefits to the host country of hosting a multinational company well they receive foreign direct investment flows it might provide employment and income. There may be jobs created and so more wealth for people within that country. It may have a positive impact on other local businesses, perhaps if they're supplying the multinational company. This may generate more tax revenue. This may generate more economic growth. Local companies, if maybe if they've joint ventured with the multinational company, may be able to gain uh, technology and people may gain skills working for that multinational company. Also, some foreign companies may bring better practices in terms of corporate social responsibility. So what might be the drawbacks of being a multinational company? Well, there may be exposure to political risk. If I set up operations in a country with an unstable political system, there is a possibility that maybe my assets might be seized if there's a change in government or the government will change policies that make it harder for my business to be successful. There may be logistical issues. It's hard to coordinate the delivery of products, the manufacturing products across many different countries, which may possibly result in diseconomies of scale due to maybe communication issues, logistical issues. It may be expensive. Uh, then we may need to think about how we're going to finance the expansion to become a multinational company. There may be issues with competition authorities that so we may be adopting a monopoly position. Um, there may be some ethical concerns. You may be becoming a multinational company and we're not 100% sure exactly the, uh, how the practices that are being used in the market in which we've based ourselves to produce products will be interpreted by our customers. And this may lead to, in turn to possible reputational damage. From a host country, what might be some of the risks of having multinational companies operating in your market? Well, they may uh, be associated with poor wages and working conditions. You know, that's why they're in our country in the first place, to exploit cheap labor and poor work conditions. Sometimes they've been associated with exploitation of labor and in particular child labor. They may increase competition for our local businesses, making it harder for domestic businesses to survive. Actually, the multinational company might not pay any tax in our company, in our jurisdiction, in our country because of transfer pricing. Often it's accused of creating a bit of a race to the bottom. A company will set up in our market and say, we like working here because you have low standards in terms of working conditions and low wages. But unless you keep them low, we'll move to another country. So they can use this as an incentive or use as a bit of a stick to try and encourage the country to worsen its uh, employee legislation, for example. Sometimes this is known as, we get kind of risk of this idea of cultural imperialism, where these big, powerful uh, multinational companies come into smaller markets and impose their products, impose their ways of uh, practicing, have a lot of say over how the country is run, and act a bit like empires imposing their culture on our, on our domestic country. So in this video, we've looked at why a, a company might want to become a multinational company and some of the advantages and disadvantages to both the company and also the host country. That's it. Thank you very much for listening.